What's up everybody, this video we're going to be wrapping up what we've been talking about over the last few videos. So we're going to be doing our styling, some refactoring, lots of cleanup on the user interface, and overall just improve the user experience. So lots of stuff in this video, but we'll get to look forward to starting something new in the next video. So I encourage you to follow your way through this video and go through these same code changes. I have a way of when I'm explaining stuff to kind of go through some examples and not clean up after myself. So now we're going to go through and clean up this search, which doesn't work too great. We also have some other things that I needed to fix. So the first thing is when you search a term, let's go back and we'll search tacos or something. First off, the enter button doesn't hit search. So you have to actually click it. We're gonna fix that. Next, we're replacing the history. So when I go back, it doesn't actually go back to the dictionary page. So we're gonna fix that as well. And then when you actually do search a word, I want to be given the option to search another word in line here with a search bar. So we're going to overall just make our application a little bit more user friendly. Let's start off by not replacing the history. That's easy. I went through this example, but I never actually cleaned it up after. So we'll replace that easy peasy. Now, for this return inside of the dictionary, instead of returning a fragment, let's go ahead and return a form and give it an on submit event handler here. So we'll define the function. And inside of this function, we're going to do exactly what this button is doing, which is navigating. So cut this from the button, paste it here. And the reason I'm doing this is because by default, when you have a form, the button will submit that form. And when you have a form selected, you can use the enter key to submit it as well. So it's an easy way to enable the enter key. Now we don't need this on click for the button. We can get rid of that altogether. Clean up this code just a bit. There we go. And we need to close the form down here as well. So we save, looks pretty good. Let's check it out. We will search another term, test, hit enter, and it works. So that was a bit of functionality improvements that I was thinking about. Now let's go back and style this so it doesn't look like uh, what's something that's super ugly. Well, I've always found mirrors to be pretty ugly, but anyways, let's go back to this and we're going to style this form. So we'll say class name. We're going to use the flex class, which makes it very easy for us to center the content with justify center and add space between the elements with space X dash two, for example, save and take a look. Already looking a lot better. Now, one thing I want to do is add a max width of say 300 pixels. Mm, and if you want to do a specific pixel amount, you need to use square brackets like so. What this will do is it will restrict that size and it also scoots it over because originally the width took up the whole page. Now the width will just take up this much of the page. So 300 pixels. And then within that 300 pixels, these two elements are centered with a little bit of space between them. Hopefully that makes a decent amount of sense with how these classes work. Next thing you can do is give a placeholder to the inputs, which to me just makes it a little bit more predictable on what you're supposed to type in there or what people will type in there. So for example, we could say, dinosaur and now we get a grayed out dinosaur text and when we type it will replace that it still looks a little funny in this box so let's go ahead and add some padding so we'll say class name and set this equal to px2 there we go that'll push over the text just a little bit next you may notice these corners are very sharp you can fix that with the rounded class now it looks a little better. The only other thing is maybe making it slightly taller. So for that, I'm going to add a PY of one. Let's take a look now. Ah, yes, that looks a bit better. Obviously this comes down to personal taste, so you can design it how you please. Now if we take a look at mobile view, if we scroll down, you can see it gets cut off. And there's an easy fix for this. Inside of a flex, right here, you can make your elements have the shrink class, and this will shrink them when the screen size shrinks. But we have to have one more thing, and that is to set a min width of zero, because by default, inputs will have a minimum width and prevent that from working. So now, 
whenever we scroll over, this will shrink and the page just looks a lot better. So now we don't have to worry about if someone's on a mobile phone, it potentially being chopped off, which most likely it's fine, but it's just a good thing to know. Now I will talk about centering both of these on the page, but first let's do the search button. So I'm going to steal some of the classes from the add employee, which has these classes. So the specific ones I want are the color and the hover, the text white, font bold, and rounded. I don't really want the padding because I'm going to use the padding to match the other input and we don't need it to be centered or block. So we'll just take these and we'll just remove the ones that we don't need. So you can just type them out if you're following along. So we'll go down here class name paste and then we'll replace these with py1 and px2 all right cool let's check it out ah not too bad so that's what it looks like on mobile and then this is on desktop now the end goal is to be able to type in a word here and now there we go we got a dinosaur i want to have a button here with the search bar so it would kind of make sense to design this as its own component that we could include here or on the definition page. So let's do that now. We're going to go into our components, new file, definition search. I'm not going with plain search because it's just a little general and I could see me wanting to use that later, but feel free to use that if you wish. Export default function definition search. And now what we're going to do is we're basically just going to take everything out of this dictionary here and we're just going to put it inside of the definition search. So I'll take all this code here, cut that, paste it here, and I'm just going to take the imports as well. So we'll take those and bring them up here. And now we should just be able to return definition search and then close that we'll save and hopefully that works ah yep looks to be exactly the same here but now we have a component that we can reuse so if we go into the definition after the definition is printed which is right here we could have another search bar so we could say something like paragraph search again and then include definition search. Let's check that out. We'll search something. There we go. It gives the definition and then gives us the opportunity to search again. I noticed one potential area of improvement is this spacing. So we have it so that the elements here are centered inside of this form using justify center. There's an alternative we could use, which is space between, and that'll space them out, but line it up on the left. So let's try that out. We'll go back to our code and go into definition search and switch justify center with space between. And now it appears that everything is in line. Now, it may be the case you want to center this on the page. Maybe you don't, that's fine, but I'm going to show you what that might look like if you do need to do that. So basically, now that we have this component, we can move it around as a single unit. So we'll go into the dictionary page and we can surround this with a div. So we'll say div. And you'll notice everything's kind of grayed out. That's because we need to put parentheses around everything and then we can remove the semicolon from the definition search and then we can give a class name to this div and the class name we're going to use we will use flex and then justify center and you can see that'll put it on the center of the page so by putting this centering logic inside of the dictionary component instead of inside of the definition search it's a little bit more flexible now we can have it centered inside of the dictionary and not centered inside of a definition. Those are the major changes I wanted to show you. There's one more thing I'm going to show you in this video, which is completely optional. Right now we have this main page and then we have a parameterized page that takes data here. And these have different values right here. You could use the same thing. So you could have dictionary and then dictionary slash hello. And that's totally fine. So if you wanted to set that up, it would be inside of app.js or wherever you've defined your routing. And we had something kind of like this originally with definition 
we ended up removing it. But now that things are kind of built out, it makes a little bit more sense to have this in here. So now we have the dictionary, and then when we type in something, it goes, oh, we have to update the uh, URL path. So definition search, and we will change this to slash dictionary. All right, let's try that. So go to the dictionary, hello, and it goes to dictionary slash hello. Either setup works, this kind of makes sense to me. You know, if we want to go back to the general dictionary page, we just delete that extra section of the URL. And here you might have some more information like suggested words or generate a random word, whatever it may be. Another cool challenge may be to search and have the definitions show up in line here and you can keep getting new definitions showing up on the page. And at this point, I think we're good. So I'm going to add everything and commit style the dictionary. Did I spell that wrong? Oh yeah, git ush. All right, so I'm going to push this and now we can all start on the same exact page in the next video. If you haven't been following along exactly, you can find the code with that commit title and find it at this URL here. So yeah, definitely check out the code if you need. And with that, I hope you're excited for the next section. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe.